What? You're recording already? Cool! Hey guys, I wanted to take a second to share with you something I learned today. Now when I bought this bug, I bought it at a really good deal. I knew something might be wrong with it in the engine. It sounded like it had noisy valves, but it also sounded a little louder than that. It almost sounded like a rod knot. So I was suspicious when I first bought it. Here's a surefire way to tell if there's something majorly wrong with your engine. In this case, the gentleman I bought it from recently changed the oil, so I wasn't able to tell. Whenever I see perfectly clean oil, it makes me slightly suspicious, and here's the reason why. So if you look at this engine oil with me, you'll see something that shouldn't be there. First thing to notice is this engine's fairly oily, and that's okay. If some gaskets are bad, that's all right. I'm okay with an oily engine. What I'm not okay with, however, it's kind of sparkly. It shouldn't be this shiny. So what's going on is there's metal shavings in the oil. Why would you have metal shavings in the oil? Well, it probably has something to do with this rod knock. So the rod is probably knocking, the bearing's probably bad. And so the rod's smacking against the metal, shearing off some of the metal, which is then making metal flakes. That metal flakes is going into the engine oil. So it's a two-fold issue. One, there's a bad rod bearing. Two, there's metal flakes running around in the oil. Now this is bad because oil is designed to lubricate your engine, not shake it, not shake it, <laughs> not scratch it. And so when you have metal in the oil, it scratches all the surfaces that need to remain smooth. Well, and that could be things like your cylinder bore, it can be all the bearings, it could be a myriad of different things. But metal shavings in your oil essentially means not only am I going to have to rebuild the engine, but the engine may not be rebuildable depending on how much damage is done to the components of the motor. So just keep that in mind. Keep a lookout for that when you're looking at a new bug to buy. Uh-oh. The red dwarf's loogie that got blown on the front of this car. It got dirty. Nasty. Ew, gross. What's going on guys? You know, I started the day thinking it was gonna be oh, such an awesome day. I was gonna be able to work on my bug. I was gonna be able to work on the paint and get it all outside and have some fun, enjoy the sun rays. And then, this happened. You know, I moved to Boise last summer because I was tired of the rain of Seattle. But it's just as rainy here. Hint, hint. Don't come move into Boise. It's a terrible place. It always rains. Stay far, far away. We've done a couple things in the bug here, uh, some of which I did not record. Uh, why, you ask? Well, because I was just kind of motivated. I just wanted to move forward. So I did. So this is what I've done. We have most of the paint off this hood so far. We're going to leave some of it because we've done a lot of work on the nose and I don't really want to undo all the work we've done. So the biggest thing we need to do here is fair out where the paint meets the bare metal. Let me explain. So right here, we've fared this out already. And if I run my hand across it, I really can't feel anything. That's, that's actually true for most of this, so that's already been done. But you really need to spend a lot of time making sure that that is fared out. If you don't take care of this, you're gonna see this big old lip when you paint it like the thing has a bra when it doesn't. So we also have the apron down to bare metal, as well as this front section, another part of the apron is down to bare metal. For the most part, there's a little bit of touch up, but not really much that needs to be done. We have one really gross part about this hood. Yep, all that burn spot from when I used the torch. I know it doesn't seem like that long ago, but it seems like forever ago to me when I first started learning how to actually bend metal without using heat, which is a much better way to go about it. And you don't damage the paint. I mean, you've damaged the paint from when you hit on it, but you don't damage the paint from heat and burning it. There's one other tiny little thing that I've done. And you know, I just, I regret all of these decisions because it keeps making this project take longer and longer and longer. But you know what? I'd be glad if I was the new owner of the bug that the previous owner went through this step. So here we go. 
I went ahead and took the door panels off as well I took down the paint down to the bare metal now I'm not going to have paint down to the bare metal the entire thing just mainly where it needed to be there were big old I don't know what you want to call them. There were big holes in the paint. I don't know how, but it looked kind of like someone took a shotgun to the paint, I guess. <laughs> so I wanted to make sure that it was one smooth piece as opposed to all these little pock marks. So I took all the paint off in those areas. I'm going to leave the paint on in most of the areas, but I thought I should at least paint the door jams, and then I'm probably going to end up painting this next section. So that means I'm going to have to paint this area which means I'm gonna have to end up painting this area. But gosh darn it, don't let me take the whole interior out. That's not what this is about. I'm not doing a full restoration for this car. I'm just not doing it. This is just going to be a fun time, okay? Dang it, Derek. <laughs> I need to keep telling myself this is just a fun time. This is not a professional restoration. Obviously, look at some of the things I've done. Okay, this message is for Jeremy. Yeah, calling you out, Jeremy. You need to get your butt over here next weekend. Not this weekend, next weekend. So next Friday, I expect you to be on your way over here because I want some help painting this thing. Yep, that's right. I'm calling you out in public, friend. You better get your butt over here because now, now, all of YouTube is going to be looking for you. So you better make it. Oh yeah, and if Jordan wants to show up, I wouldn't be opposed to it either. You know, if that's the case, I might just have to post some pictures up from the last time we all three worked on a bug. So y'all can need to get your butts down here so you can paint this bug. We'll have a good time. Hint, hint, don't come move into Boise. It's a terrible place, it always rains. Stay far, far away. Oh, yeah.